have the results of that review. They are not going to sell the company. They're not going to sell assets. Instead, they're going to accelerate their current three-year strategic plan. For some perspective on this, we've got Carl D'Souza joining us from DBRS Morningstar and on the desk. We've got BNN Bloomberg's Paul Bagnall, who has been looking at this one. Paul, uh, maybe not a huge shock that we're seeing this? No, in July, uh, it was reported uh, shortly after the strategic review was uh, announced, it was reported by the Globe and Mail that two big Canadian banks, Toronto Dominion and Bank of Nova Scotia, who had been early, earlier flagged as uh, potential buyers uh, of uh, Laurentia Bank of Canada had uh, essentially kicked the tires and dropped out and that they would not be buyers of uh, Laurentian Bank of Canada. Then the spotlight swung uh, to some degree to National Bank of Canada, but obviously nothing has happened uh, there as well. And so today, Laurentian Bank of Canada at 7 a.m. Eastern Time released a statement saying its strategic uh, review is over and it's going to stick with its strategic plan. So let's just pause for a moment and distinguish between the strategic review. That's what was launched in July of this year as the company uh, said it was going to explore options. It was, it was immediately seen as a willingness of the bank to sell itself. The strategic plan was announced in December of 2021 and it included a plan to increase profitability by the time 2024 rolled around. Here's what the company's announced today. It has completed its strategic review. It will continue with the current strategic plan announced in uh, late 2021. It wants to simplify its organizational structure and, quote, focus on where it can win. That sounds a little bit like going all the way back to the drawing board to focus on where it can win. Here, there, there are a couple of significant executive changes as well, including executive departures. There's a new head of personal and commercial banking. He's Eric Provo. He has uh, until now been head of commercial banking. He's credited with improving the commercial banking performance. He now takes on personal banking as well. And Karen abgral Teslik departs the bank. She has led personal banking for the past two years. Sebastian Belair becomes the new chief administrative officer. He has uh, until now been chief HR officer, human resources officer. He'll, he will retain that role and take on the role of uh, being chief administrative officer as well. Yves Denome departs the bank. He's been the uh, head of the bank's operation function over the past two and a half years. So two high profile departures and uh, new roles for a couple of existing executives. And I guess they're going to elaborate in a few months what yeah, their plan is. They've so got an investor day, to wait. investor day set for December the 7th in which uh, they're going to have more to say about all of this. I, I want to bring in uh, Carl D'Souza who um, tracks sort of the financial health of these businesses. Carl, is this a situation you think uh, that was was really just Laurentia not being appealing enough or does it also speak to the fact that the major banks that would have been the buyers have got a lot on their plate right now, and maybe uh, another acquisition doesn't really fit, considering all the other issues that are going on. Yeah, Amber, I think it, it, it's probably um, a bit of both there. Uh, the, as you've noted, the, the large Canadian banks, several of them have either um, large acquisitions where they're trying to integrate and they've closed and they're, and they're working on integration right now, or they're, they're still working on getting the approvals to close. And so th there's a lot of things going on there. And then secondly, um, I, I think it's a bit of that, that uh, you know, where to place the value on Laurentian and, and what that would translate into in potential offers. And, and if you look at the most recent transaction, which is still awaiting approvals in, in Canada, which was RBC's planned acquisition of HSBC Bank Canada, that, that bank, um, you know, had very high ROE um, or return on equity and you know an attractive customer base and 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 things that made it appealing to too many of the big six and it came to market at a time where you know um, for example rbc was flush with capital so right now as i know it i think it's a bit of both of those things that that contributed to to this isn't it true though carl that opportunities for a canadian a big canadian bank to expand its business in canada significantly are quite rare i mean typically these banks have got to go to the united states or elsewhere to uh, significantly expand their business to put capital to work in expanding their business this this really has uh, uh, has the look of a, a judgment on the on the quality of assets the quality of business at, at laurentia bank of canada does it not 
You, you, know, you, you make a valid point there. Uh, under their current strategic plan, Laurentian has made some progress. However, the bank's profitability is at the lower uh, end of, of similar size institutions in Canada, and they've had profitability challenges. Additionally, the current operating environment and, and ongoing macroeconomic uncertainty make things more challenging for Laurentian to achieve material further improvement under its con uh, current strategic plan. So I think, you, you know, when you, when you look at that and you see the environment that the banks are in, Laurentian's in a bit of a tough spot. Uh, as we saw in the recent round of uh, bank earnings, provisions for credit losses are increasing and non-interest expenses are elevated. Additionally, loan growth is slowing and competition is intensifying, which will likely put pressure on margins going forward. These type of things are, are all the banks are exposed to that, but Laurentian is a little more challenged given their current situation. And I guess, so then is the current plan, which as we know right now is on efficiency, on simplification, is that enough? You know, I mean, that, that's part of the equation. Uh, I think, you know, um, they, uh, as was noted earlier, they've combined personal and commercial banking and they've combined the operations function in HR. However, th th there is more work to be done and, and moving forward, the bank will have to determine how to improve its performance in the light of the constraints I just noted with regards to the macroeconomic environment, um, their, their, their low profitability metrics. And, and I think what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to more effectively allocate capital to higher performing businesses and some specialized products where they can do well. Some options could also still potentially include divesting in or scaling back some underperforming businesses. They could slow expansion in some high risk commercial businesses that require more capital. And they can also focus on to see if underperforming businesses can be corrected and how to best execute on that. So, uh, you know, they also have some additional levers to reduce expenses, such as what they recently did in the restructuring of their capital markets business. The message from the bank today seems to be we're not shifting off our strategic plan of December 2021, but we're going to accelerate it. We're going to push it uh, more aggressively than, than we have in the past. Is that the message that you expect to hear in early December when the company holds an investor day and presumably elaborates on all this? Or do you think there's a potential for more fundamental shifts in direction? You know, when they, when they come out with that announcement, I think, you know, they have to do what they're saying, which is to revise their current strategic plan because of what's going on. The, the, the macroeconomic environment and, and, and the operating environment for banks is, is very different now than when Laurentian um, set its last strategic plan and undertook it. Um, they're two to three years into that plan right now. So... Uh, you, you know, you wouldn't expect, um, you know, a complete revamp because that's going to happen in their next strategic plan. And um, so so I think when they come out in their investor day, they, they have a bit more time now to kind of refocus that now that the sale is off the table and they can provide additional details at that time on how to revamp or, or recharge, if you want to call it that, their existing strategic plan for the last year. You know, Canadians will complain about the lack of options out there, this being sort of an oligopolistic uh, sector. But is there room in the market for uh, a Laurentian? Is there a market for them to really go after that uh, perhaps is, is untouched or relatively under-indexed by some of the big banks? Yes, definitely, Amber. Uh, you know, if you look at some of the, the medium-sized players in the market, that is what they're trying to do right now. Going head-to-head -head with the large banks is not a winning strategy. And, and so you have to look at niches where you where, that are underserved to a certain extent by the large banks and where you have, have the capabilities and expertise so that you can you know, win in, in those areas. And, and as I mentioned, they do have some specialized products and, and services and things like that. Um, they're, they're also more concentrated in the Quebec market, although they, they are still somewhat challenged there as well because of the two large players that dominate that market being National Bank um, and, as well as Desjardins. 